Jesus commanded us to go and make disciples of all nations. What a privilege it is that we get to be part of what God is doing in the earth. Well, welcome to Hope Today. I'm Anna Schmidt and I am with Amy Schaefer today. And Amy, it's good to be with you. And we've got a good conversation coming up. Thank you, Anna Schmidt. <laughs> I love to say that new last name. Coming up in just a moment, you're going to meet a group of young people who are on fire for the Lord. Tom will be joined by Youth with a Mission Pittsburgh, and you're going to see how God is using them to share the good news of Jesus across the globe. And I know that we've talked about YWAM a lot. Tom yes. is passionate about YWAM. But okay, think about it. Youth with a Mission. What right. if there were middle-aged with a mission and yes. older with a mission and teenagers with a mission and like what if we all carried that sense of mission right. in our life? I wonder if the world would not be a different place. Absolutely. God's no respecter of age or gender or anything. Right. So the truth is if we are children of God, we have been commanded by Jesus to go and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. you know, I also want to just say quickly, YWAM is a Cornerstone Cares partner. And so for those of you who partner with us know that with our Cornerstone Cares uh, arm, we give a portion of every gift that comes in here to go out and help spread the gospel through these missionaries and organizations that are doing powerful things. So Cornerstone Television is taking the gospel over the airways, but these organizations and ministries are taking the gospel on the ground. Boots on the ground is yeah, what you always say. Right. Take it to the streets. Uh -huh. That's what we do. That's right, we sure do. Well, today on this Thursday, we're gonna have some lots of fun and play Stump the Host. All right, so our theme is from the book of Acts today. And here is the first question. On what day did the apostles first speak in tongues? On the day of Pentecost. Right, yeah, I would I mean, say Pentecost. Is there anything more specific than Pente that? On what day? Was it a specific day or just That's on the a, day of Pentecost? Was, okay, we're saying Pentecost, okay. fi final answer. Yes. Yay! All right, we're, we need our, where's our bling? Our, our skin fit. Uh, there Thank we go. Yes. They were ready for the X. I, I think so. And we got them. Yes. So Pentecost, okay. uh, that is in Acts 2. Okay, here's another question. Uh, in Lida, Lida, Peter healed a man named Ooh. Ooh. Aeneas. <laughs> what oh, was his illness? Oh my. I mispronounced both names. Uh, you Anna. know, I just think we should just uh, say hard name. Or cause... blind. I mean, there's blind, there's lame, there's leprosy. <laughs> Take our pick. Take one, A, um, B, or C. We would love to hear from you. Our, I know, our right? lovely family. So uh, you pick. let's just say that he had leprosy. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to go into Acts chapter 9 for that story. And You know what's weird is to like read the Bible and then honestly, some, it's not like we have the Bible memorized, but it's like that name didn't even register with me. Same. And I've read the book of Acts. So, but it's good because it makes me think I need I to go, go back. back and really pay attention and dig into That's, those details. I know, but also our producer loves to stump <laughs> us, so keep us humble. <laughs> All right, final question. Where was Paul at the end of the book of Acts? Oh, man. These are, we don't even get like a multiple choice. No, or I need a multiple choice on this one. Uh, or Tom. We need to like or phone, Tom. phone yeah. Tom. Tom is doing a deep dive study in the book. Honestly, I would have to guess on this one. Yeah, take a guess. I don't, where was he? <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> Can we just say X? What? Let's just say, oh, oh, I almost guess Rome. Okay, okay. Yeah. I almost said Rome. Uh-huh. You know what? We need to change this up a little I bit, don't you think? I think so. Okay, here's the deal. You have been judging us. 
you've been thinking those girls, that team, they don't know the Bible. Well, now it's our turn to try to stump you, the viewer. That's right, Stump the Viewer, you! We're never supposed to point at the camera, but today is our only time because we have a Bible trivia question for you, our lovely audience. Here is your question. Are you ready? Who was Saul's first missionary companion? You have a multiple choice. That's not fair. We're a little jealous. Here's our four choices. A, Peter. B, Ananias, C, Barnabas, D, Silas. So we'd love to hear from you. If you go to our ctvn.org website, backslash stump, you can play along and select what you think the answer is. We'll reveal the results on tomorrow's program and one randomly selected person who votes will win a prize pack that includes this t-shirt and this book. So make sure you answer. Go to our website now. And once again, go to ctvn.org backslash stump to play along. Mm -hmm. How fun. It's so much fun. <laughs> we hear from so many of you that you love Stump the Host. We know that you are playing along at home. Well, now's your chance to get involved. You have a question of your own and you have the opportunity to win a cool prize. prize. I like prizes. Let's now go over to Tom, who is standing by with some very special younger guests. What would it be like to take a bunch of young people to countries around the world? Would they be able to do any ministry? Would they be able to share the gospel? Well, that was what Lauren Cunningham's vision was. And we are with Youth with a Mission today, Youth with a Mission Pittsburgh, or you'll hear us say YWAM, but they're with us today. They just got back from Brazil where they had a tremendous outreach. We're going to hear all about that. But I just want to uh, introduce them to you and uh, get to know them a little bit. First of all, let's welcome everybody. We've got the whole team here. So let's give yourselves a hand. We've got the whole team here. Uh, so we've got Cole and Lauren and Savannah and Malachi. And uh, guys, uh, thanks for being with us. So you have just been through a discipleship training school, right? Yeah. 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 OK. All right. So Cole, maybe you're on staff there. Maybe you could explain what is a DTS? Um, so a DTS is a discipleship training school. Um, it's a five month long school. It's broken up into two parts. So your first part is gonna be your lecture phase. This is where you're really gonna begin to know who God is, hear his voice, um, and start to understand his, his character and his nature. So you're gonna go through a lot of um, times of prayer, a lot of times of worship, um, as well as hearing from different pastors and speakers. Um, we have weeks that are dedicated to um, pride or hearing God's voice or that sounds like a fun week pride week I mean <laughs> just kidding it, it yeah. sounds like God really deals with some things in our, in our hearts doesn't he yeah yeah mm -hmm. exactly um, but yeah it's just really about knowing God um, like you said um, it's heart surgery so a lot of growth takes place in those three months and then um, it's a training school so those three months are learning how to equip the students. And then we go overseas for two months um, and we share the gospel. And that was in Brazil this time? Yeah. Yeah. So Lauren, tell me about the lecture phase. I mean, is there anything that sticks out to you? Uh, a, a lot of things stuck out to me for lecture phase. When I first came in, I didn't want to be there. <laughs> to be yeah. completely honest with you, I um, was going through a lot when I first entered DTS, um, but just like the way that they go in depth about so many topics, like God really showed me so much about myself and so many things I was carrying with me. One of the weeks was um, dealt with uh, dealing with like your heart and all the word curses that people had like spoken over you. And I didn't realize how heavy my heart was with that. So it's like each week there was like something specifically that like God like touched you know, and the ways that he made me grow and like 
I can honestly say that like Lecture Phase changed my life and like changed my relationship with Christ completely. So we're not talking like academics here. We're not like, you know, you're not getting a grade for, you know, no, uh, no, biblical <laughs> Hebrew or anything here. It's, it's again, uh, what's going on in your heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels academic sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's okay but too. But it's cool because it's like they make you write, you know, reflections and stuff like that and keep journals. So it's like you're not just passively going through the course, yeah. but it's like you're really forced to sit and analyze like, okay, what is God really saying to you? And so you're like constantly in circles where people are like asking you about like, okay, so what's God doing in your life today? And then you're surrounded by all these other students where God is working on their hearts as well. And then like God uses other people to speak to you and to your life and vice versa. So it's just like really cool how lecture phase is structured. Well, uh, let me ask you about that. So you've got all these people that are digging around in their hearts. And yeah. Is there ever any conflict? Is there is there issues? Let me let me let me go to you, Savannah from Iowa. Yay, Iowa! Gene, I give a call out to Iowa. Yeah. Tell me, what did God do in your heart? He did surgery. <laughs> um, I came into DTS. I wanted to come to Pittsburgh, so I was a Christian. I'd been walking with the Lord for a year, but it was a very passive relationship. So. I came into the program and I had no expectations. I was just like, this is my end to come to the city and then after this I'll go do my own thing. Um, and the first week, our base director, Mark, he gave, um, he had a week of teaching just about hearing from God and understanding like intimacy with Christ and what that relationship looks like. Um, and that was something I was unfamiliar with. Even though I grew up in church, um, it was very like conservative Baptist church, so I wasn't really familiar with the spiritual intimacy mm -hmm. involved in that. Um, yeah, my heart was like blown to pieces the first <laughs> week. And I remember we had this, so we have daily devotional times in the morning. And uh, we were all kind of sprawled out across the room and I had my devotional time and I was like, God is actually listening to me. Like he's actually hearing what I have to say. He's actually in conversation with me. So. I started off with a very minimal understanding of what that was, and so that first week just was the beginning of paving that for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's let's take a. So you you have this for like three months, right? It's three months of intense. It's kind of like a retreat, sort of, for three months yeah. instead of a weekend. But then you go on outreach. So Malachi, tell me about that. What was it like to like all this whole group? You've had three months together. You've probably gotten close. What's it like to go to another country and share the gospel? Um, yeah, so for me, I was like kind of delayed because of my passport. So I got to Brazil two weeks later after everyone else. Okay. And um, yeah, like during the lecture phase, uh, most of us came into the DTS like confused um, on a search for God or we were called to do it. So like during that time, we're just being worked on. Our hearts are being searched. Our hearts are being, uh, we're getting convictions and we're just like really being worked on. And during that time, it's like really personal to everyone. So we're all going through it together. So like it did like unify us during that time. And then, uh, yeah, like testimonies, especially like hearing about each other's lives before um, we all came into DTS brought us together. And then going on outreach, um, that was like a whole different monster yeah. that brought us together uh, really fast. Uh, especially doing ministry, just seeing, just doing it with each other, like seeing how um, like we can share the word, share the good news of Jesus with each other and like just the presence of God being with us. So did you, so, uh, and just to be clear, you guys, when you go on this two month outreach, you're going to do evangelism. I yeah. mean, you're going to confront somebody with the oh, gospel yeah. Yeah. Uh, at some point. So what was that like? I mean, that's not the easiest thing to do in the world. Yeah. How did, how did that feel? Uh, I'll, I'll stay with, with you, Malachi. How did that feel like when you had the opportunity to share with someone? Um, at first, it's like you're uncomfortable because it's like, especially in America, we're not used to just going up to people and talking to random people. Yeah. But it's like it, the Holy Spirit like really speaks through you. And a lot of the stuff you'll say, like you don't even really think of, like you don't think you would say this, like the Holy Spirit reveals things to you about these people that you speak with that you wouldn't normally know. And it's like, it's really life changing. Like the amount of tears we've seen just by um, just having encounters with these people, praying with these people, 
um, just like really getting into their lives, getting to know them, because mm -hmm. some of these people, nobody talks to them and they don't get to experience this. Like they don't get to talk to people about things that have been on their hearts. And like the Holy Spirit leads us to people that the Lord's been working on. Like a lot of the time people had dreams and visions like days or weeks in advance that left them Before with questions. Before you guys got there. Yeah. Wow. And so yeah. that the Lord just opened the door. And mm -hmm. I, I guess about 200 people came to the Lord during this time. So yeah. Lauren, back to you. Tell me a story uh, or either one of you jump in there with a story, something that would really hit you as far as uh, a powerful time you had there. Um, I think the powerful thing that God did, he did a lot of amazing things, but it's like the way that he used each of our testimonies to like minister to people who are going through similar things that we had no idea they're going through similar things. So like in my life, I struggled with um, suicidal thoughts, depression. I, I struggle with like, in terms of mental health, I struggled a lot with that. And that's something that God redeemed and like saved me from. Um, because nobody else knew about that um, except for him. And it was just me and him throughout the whole thing. And so it's like lecture phase, God was really like working on my heart to heal a lot of the stuff that led mm -hmm. me to the depression mm -hmm. and heal like a lot of stuff that, you know, led me to where I was at during that time, that dark period of my time um, of my life. And then it's like we go to Brazil and all of a sudden God's like bringing me like all these people who like struggle with depression, who struggle with like and mental it's, health. And it's a really different culture because you guys were in the favelas mm -hmm. and everything, yeah. right? In the, in the yeah. really uh, like difficult situations. Maybe you could speak to that. Yeah, so we had this really powerful encounter in a favela. So for those people who don't know, a favela is basically just like a slum um, in South America and Brazil uh, has a lot of them. They have like the largest one in South America. So. Um, there's a lot of poverty and corruption and basically um, drug cartels run these. It's like their own government. They have their own system. So um, we had the privilege of actually entering a favela because we were affiliated with the local church. So only select churches are allowed to go and um, they're actually like surprisingly receptive. They allow prayer and um, so it was, it was a really powerful time of evangelism. But we were horrified because we walked in and it's all the houses are built on the mountain. Um, and there's no escalators or anything, so it's just like flights and flights of stairs up. And we walk in, and there's this wall, and you have all these houses, and there's immediately two guys with huge machine guns. And we're all looking at each other like, okay. We did not talk about that in Pittsburgh at the That place. wasn't on the DTS training. Yeah. What to do with <laughs> the guy with the machine gun? gun, 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 gun no guns. gun safety. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> so, um, it, but it was so beautiful because they received our pastor and our pastor actually prayed over them. Um, and so we made our way up, up this huge flight of stairs um, and our different translators and leaders were just kind of telling us and about the environment there and what, what kind of things go on. So uh, yeah, we talked to so many different people and that, there's so many stories in that. But at the very end, uh, we encountered this couple and they were a missionary couple and they felt led to live in the favela. So it was a, a pastor and his wife and they were older in age. Um, and the pastor we were evangelizing with knew them, so we all stopped and we were discussing with them. Uh, and they had this like outdoor patio area, so we were all kind of like clumped together on their patio. And they were sharing about their ministry there that they were called to. And it was so powerful to hear from them because no one knows them. You know, mm -hmm. had, had we not known that pastor, we would have never encountered that, that couple. Right. But I felt like I received a download from God in that moment. Like, this is what a high call looks like in the Christian walk. Like, they are executing the high call. Mm -hmm. um, and they were such powerful, they were such a powerful couple. It was great. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I, and, and again, that, that, now, that story you told uh, anybody that wants to go to DTS, you're not necessarily going to have to go into a machine gun no. area. <laughs> uh, hopefully not. <laughs> but what I love about YWAM and what I love about these guys is you, you just go where God uh, lead you. So uh, ask, I want to ask you this, Cole. If someone's watching this, they say, wow, my, my uh, uh, daughter or son is graduating from high school or college and don't know what to do. Uh, how can they get involved? Um, there's YWAMs uh, across the world. Um, we're just the one located in Pittsburgh, but it's just like a Google search away. You just look up YWAM um, and apply. And then from there, whatever base you select, they just 
Um, just reach out through an email or a phone call. But the DTS is always, discipleship training school is always the way in, right? That's like yeah. the first thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you go through that time. Well, uh, just a, a, you know, a really awesome to see God put together a group of everybody from all over the place, all the different countries, different, I mean, you're all from all over America and Canada and everything. And, and uh, so uh, Malachi, just what would you say is the thing that's going to stay with you more than anything? Um, I would say during the outreach, like the realness of God, um, he really like showed us his face. He really showed us like, uh, he answered our prayers. And for me, especially like I'm a pastor's kid. So I was really confused going into this and I was like on a search for God for myself. And during outreach, God would answer prayers within like hours sometimes. Um, just showing us his presence, showing us uh, these people that are in need for him and how uh, we've all experienced that void inside of us, that emptiness, and we've tried to fill it with, fill it with uh, whatever, just fill in the blank, uh, like drugs, alcohol, relationships. Right, right. And um, like just going out there in Brazil and seeing all those people and just seeing that they have that same feeling as we do, that we did, and that the only answer that can fill that void is Jesus. And we're, we're here to share that with them. We're here to help um, just be messengers for God and just bring his uh, sons and daughters back home. Yeah. And I think that will really stick, to, stick with me. Well, I appreciate what you guys have done. And I know, I, belie I believe that it blesses the heart of God when he sees people cross their culture, cross their uh, political boundaries, and bring the gospel. And uh, thank you all so much for sharing with us today. Discover what God's Word has to say about healing and deliverance. Best-selling author John Eckhart makes topical Bible study easy with his new book, Scriptures for Faith, Deliverance, and Healing. This handy reference is for those who want to have a greater understanding of healing and deliverance to incorporate God's Word into their prayers. Eckhart also includes targeted commentary to highlight key scriptures and life application. His spirit-filled perspective will enhance your time in God's Word and encourages the spiritual disciplines of memorization and meditation. Request scriptures for faith, deliverance, and healing as our thank you gift when you support Cornerstone Television this month. Request your copy today. If you want to strengthen the ministry of CTVN, share your best gift by visiting us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for your partnership. Hope happens here. Oh, that book, remember too, if you go to our website and answer the Stump the Viewer question, you could have an opportunity to win that book all for yourself, along with our fancy dancy Cornerstone t-shirt. Uh, but we're, welcome back to Hope Today. We're glad that you've been hanging out with us as we listen to that conversation with the YWAM young adults. It's so cool to see, Amy, what they are doing mm -hmm. around the world, how they're being trained, how they're stepping out of their comfort zone to be used by God. I mean, Brazil, seeing hundreds saved, going to a city where it's guarded by men with machine guns. I mean, I hope today that you feel inspired to take the gospel to the streets, to take the good news that like, we're good, Anna. We're going to heaven. Right. We know lots of our viewers are like, man, we know Jesus. Our, our, our future and eternity is set, but there are people that don't know Christ. Absolutely. And they need a messenger. Right, we, we have the greatest treasure in us by having Jesus as our savior. And the, as I said at the beginning of the program, we have been commanded to go out and make disciples. And our scripture today comes from Romans 10, 14, and it says, how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? 
And, you know, we don't necessarily have to go to Brazil. We don't have to go to another country. God wants to use you right where he has planted you. He has given you this circle of influence. Like the people that you touch in your daily life is different from who I'm around and who Amy's around. And mm -hmm. God has entrusted you with these hearts, with these souls to build relationship with them, to, to be there. And then look for those opportunities, pray, ask God for the opportunities to tell them about Jesus and about his love. It's, it's beautiful to just have that relational evangelism. I love what it says in the, the message Bible. It says, and how is anyone going to tell them unless somebody is sent to them? Mm -hmm. See, God is sending people to his people. God is releasing. He is sending you out to reach people. You know, <clears throat> I have young adults all in my family and all the young adult friends are over and we have a church with all kinds of young people. Yeah. And uh, one of the, they're, they're really going to the streets. They're going door to door. I mean, it's like old school. Wow. I'm like, you guys got in a car and you went door to door to share the gospel on your own right. without any compulsion, any manipulation, no payments, nothing. Uh -huh. They asked a guy, if you were to die today, and where would you go? Where, would, you, would you go to heaven? Would you go to hell? And he goes, you know, I thought I would go to heaven. He goes, but I actually need to repent today. Is that right? He said that? that. I mean, he said, I need to repent mm -hmm. and get right with God right now. Yeah. So, I mean, I wonder about you. Do you need to just repent and get, with, get right with God right now? Don't wait another day. Call us at 888-665-4483. Get right with God so that you know that you'll be with him in eternity. And then you take that life-changing message and you take it to other people. Yeah, that's right. Jesus is our good news. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we just want to remind you before we close out today to be a part of our stump the viewer question. <laughs> I bet you could do better than we can. <laughs> so you could just go to ctvn.org slash stump and share your answer. We heard that you don't even have to get the right answer to be possibly chosen for the prize. Oh. So thank you so much for being with us. It was a lot of fun. We just bless you in Jesus name. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the key ingredients to achieving a happy and fulfilling marriage. Marriage therapist and author, Dr. Gary Lovejoy, explores several marriages outlined in the Bible and examines what we can learn from both the strong ones and the challenging ones. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.